How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Wednesday here on this program. we got a lot of news to get into here today. Tonight, AW Dynamite. That'll be very exciting. we got a lot of, a lot of announcements for the show tonight. A hair match coming up, a bunch of big matches, and, uh, and more. Yes, more tonight. And, of course, NXT 2.0 was last night, so I got our weekly NXT report. Guys, I know you're not watching NXT 2.0, but this is not a horrible show. I'm not going to say it's like a great show or anything like that, but if you actually watch it, it's all right. I'm going to tell you about it here today. We've also got a uh, lineup for next week's NXT 2.0. we got Tony Khan talking about Moxley and Tanahashi and Forbidden Door. Raw ratings for Monday night. We'll tell you about that. Uh, third hour. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. You realize the third hour main event was a pose down? Well, keep that in mind when we go over the uh, the raw ratings, the hourly numbers here on the program today. Har- Hiromu will be making his debut with New Japan Strong, so that's good news. And uh, a lot of other stuff as well. Your chance today to contact us, 425-780-7566. That is the text message line. Don't bother calling. It doesn't work. 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And, of course, at F4W Online on Cameo. Father's Day is coming, everybody. Now is your opportunity to get a -a once-in-a-lifetime cameo for your dad for only $35. What a deal. F4W Online on Cameo. Check it out. And I'll be back after the break with Sempy, Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Tonight is AEW Dynamite. There will be a lot of matches announced for the show. Get a gander of this lineup. Hair versus hair. Chris Jericho versus Ortiz. Somebody is getting shaved. Bald, I hear. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus will be facing the Young Bucks in a ladder match for the AEW title. So it's no longer, obviously, the three-way with the Hardys. They've not added another team. You know, they could have added, but it wouldn't have made any sense with the rankings and everything like that, is the uh, Seidel brothers, because this is in their hometown. And uh, the Seidels in a ladder match would have been something else. But Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus the Young Bucks. We got uh, Tony Storm versus Britt Baker. We have got an All-Atlantic Championship qualifier, Miro versus Ethan Page. Wardlow faces 20 security guards in a handicap elimination match. John Moxley and Hiroshi Tanahashi will have a face-to-face. And Will Ospreay will face Dax Harwood. That sounds like quite a match. Holy smokes. So that's the lineup for Dynamite here tonight. And uh, if you guys watched the show last week, not a fan. But uh, we'll see how it goes tonight because this is quite the lineup. Quite the lineup for the show tonight. You looking forward to it, Mike? I am looking forward to watching a bald-headed geek. Not Paul Jones, but Chris Jericho tonight You think Jericho's losing his hair tonight? Yes, I do. You want to make a bet? No. I actually have no idea, but... <laughs> uh, we've already... Now, is this truly going to be a, a head-shaving match? Because we have had way too many times in professional wrestling where they say we are going to see a bald-headed geek, and then we just see a little trim of hair, and that's it, and... Are we going to see just a little summer cut for Chris Jericho, or will we see a bald? Bro, whoever loses needs to be bald. 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 Not a hair on their head. Mr. Clean. You cannot go back on these. these Yeah, Kevin Nash when he got his hair. (laughs) That's so funny about that is like, bro, do you guys know anything about hair? Like, it doesn't take that long to grow. Like, if Kevin Nash wanted a nice short haircut, just like... You know, buck up, shave your head, and two months later, you'll have your short haircut. It's not the end of the world, dude. You can walk around with no hair. I've done it. You are going to get 
some angry emails about and some what? angry letters from those people suffering from male pattern baldness, those people suffering and, and getting keeps in the mail. Why or, would they or, or be mad at me? I'm things? the one that said you can walk around with a bald head. They should be sending that to Nash. Because you Nash say, refused to even go bald for two months after he lost a hair match. It's easy for the hair to grow back. For some people, once oh, you lose that hair. Here. Once, once Ric Flair got his head shaved, once Vince McMahon got his head shaved, did they ever look the same after that? Yeah, Vince looks exactly the same. He's got the exact same hair now exactly mm. his exact same that. pompadour he had in 1990 that is not the i'm same watching pompadour. the shows remember when that hair started growing back he started looking like a cone head for a while because well, like, he decided to, to have like a he, he decided he wanted like a modern haircut so he, he didn't do the old school <laughs> 1950s pompadour yeah, but then after a while he was like oh, i like it better with a pompadour it's i look like elvis <laughs> oh god oh my god that guy's over right Great balls of fire, pal. Let's bring it back. He probably talked about Elvis being too skinny. That, not at the end. Then he would have said he was too fat. If Elvis was worse. Elvis than... never had a physique, like, theory. No, that's true. The only thing he had from professional wrestling was the ability to take tons of pills at the end. DJ, I, I disagree. Vince's hair actually recovered. It went back to what it used to be when he, when he got that I, pompadour back. I yeah. disagree. I disagree. Yeah. I mean, he got older and everything like that, and, you know. Somebody commissioned a study on this, because I'm telling you, neither Vince nor Ric Flair really ever looked the same once they got their heads shaved. Well, Flair was losing his hair. Well, and he also had the facelifts and all that stuff after that. Now, Kevin Nash, was he doing that expressly because he was going to be in a movie? I think he was because he was going to be in a movie. Hmm. Well, it'd be why he didn't get it shaved, but then again, just call it a haircut match. It's not as exciting, but okay. then you, you don't guys don't believe me. something you give away. Find a, find a picture of Vince from like the last 10 years, Photoshop his hair onto his old face, and tell me it looks any different. It looks exactly the same. <laughs> I would rather than Photoshop Are we really on his, this? his hair onto your face. Tony That's Khan really admitted that he put the kibosh... That's the word used. Oh, look at you. You skipped over to the Thunder Rosa story. On the, uh, what Thunder Rosa story? The fact that, that she, she denied is, it? She responded back to you directly She wasn't today. responding to me at all. I'm not the person that did the tweet saying that she sandbagged. In fact, yesterday on the show, I opened the show saying, I didn't think she sandbagged. Were you here? <laughs> what are you talking about? Just, just wanted to have some fun with you on a Wednesday. Tony Khan admitted he put the kibosh... On John Moxley versus Roshi Tanahashi happening not once but many times in the past, he said there was a backstory with how the match came to be, saying that in the past, quote, I would never allow it to happen. They tried to do it so many times. I've always been there to stop it from happening. It's such a huge match that we had to be involved. It was going to happen, he said, joking he was like Vince McMahon at Armageddon when McMahon drove out to the ring in a truck to prevent the six-way cage match from happening. <laughs> How does this guy remember that kind of stuff? Is that when Rikishi got pushed I off? I think the... he got pushed and landed in the hay. Oh my god, yeah, that raw. Which the he actually next got day. hurt on, even though it was like they tried to keep it as safe oh, as possible. I, I could believe that. That raw that, that happened the next day would have made you believe that everybody was dead that took place that, that was in that match. It was just carnage. It says here that uh Khan said it's fate. Now is the right time for this match to take place. The two will battle over the interim title. He also said he's hoping that Forbidden Door becomes an annual event. This was in an interview with Comic Book. Khan expressed hope that the <laughs> joint the name, show... Comic yeah, Book? Comic Book, all one word, <laughs> between AEW and New Japan would happen annually going forward. I think we are hoping that's what it'll become, he said... Ghetto and I generally, anything that involves AEW New Japan, I think we're both going to have to agree, uh, agree on what the matchup is and what the ideas are for the show. That's good. Yeah, you don't say. Maybe. In general, that's what we've been doing for over a year now. It's worked out really well. So, uh, yeah, probably an annual Forbidden Door pay-per-view. Well, I'm sure somebody that's a hardcore New Japan supporter is now getting angry and upset at Tony Khan, but... Why would he not want AEW to be involved in something like that with one of their biggest stars, who happens to be one of New Japan's biggest imports, uh, want to get together? So, hey, look, I'm happy when it's happening right now, and I'm good with that. Raw last night, Monday night, 1.7 million viewers, 0.43 in 18 to 49. First place for the night on cable. 
Number was down 9% in viewers. They went against Game 5 of the never-ending NBA Finals. So the interesting thing, obviously, is the uh, hourly numbers. The uh, first hour did a 1.81 million viewers. The second hour did 1.74 million viewers. And then when we main evented with a pose down, 1.53 million viewers. A larger than normal third hour block or drop. Also likely the effect of the game and perhaps a lackluster hour three. You don't say. Perhaps. The pose down didn't... uh, Audience drops from hour one to three were 32% in women 18 to 49, which is huge. And the NBA would not have affected women as much as men. So you're telling me those women didn't care about the two muscle men doing a pose down? That's what you're telling me? Wow. Wow. Teenage girls dropped 12%. You're telling me that it's possible that men aren't watching wrestling for women in uh, skimpy outfits and women aren't watching wrestling for men oiled up and posing? Are you telling me that? They might want more? Hmm. Interesting. Teenage girls dropped 12%. Teenage boys, 29%. People over 50, 13%. These are all of the drops. So there you go. Well, see, you say that, but the Tuesday night numbers will be a little bit different, I uh, I assume, for those, I don't know, what, 475,000 people or so, uh, maybe 500,000 people that will be watching NXT. What do you mean they'll be different? Well, they have a... Well, I guess actually they're exactly the same now, yes, aren't they? Thank you. But we, but you always talk about that pervy old fan base watching NXT, now, don't you? No, it's, no, no, no. They think that. Well, actually, we did have that one incident when uh, she talked about graduating high school and they all popped. But anyway, back in a moment, Observer Live. Let's talk about NXT 2.0. Already? I don't mind this show. What's wrong with the rest of you? All right. Well, the show opened up. With uh, the Creed Brothers against Malik Blade and Edris Anofe. Okay. Malik Blade is the skinny one, and Edris Anofe is the jacked up one. And uh, unfortunately, the skinny one is a pretty good worker, or he's fine. And uh, Edris Anofe is it, he's greener than my shirt. Oh my God. And these Creed Brothers, dude, I love watching the Creed Brothers, you know, because it's like, insane but bro they're gonna kill somebody yeah. god they're just throwing these blokes around haphazardly i would go as far as to say and uh i mean it was exciting but it wasn't good it's was just an exciting wild violent battle and uh brutus pinned malik blade to win the match uh we had a segment backstage very awkward meeting with indy roxanne and cora jade Roxanne and Core J, their gimmick is they're like buddies that work the indie scene. So they're always referencing these random indies, but they never tell us anything about them. Remember that time in New York where we uh, stole my sister's car? Oh, don't talk about that story. It's like, this is a really weird gimmick. But anyway, they're going to have a match later. We had the wackiest vignette with Apollo Crews. So Apollo Crews is in a diner, and he's like writing in his journal or whatever, because I guess he goes to the diner and writes in his journal. And uh, there's some bloke who's complaining about the slow service. And unlike me, he doesn't just tweet about how the restaurant sucks. He's actually complaining to the person there. And so uh, Apollo Crews has this vision. And in the vision, he gets up and he walks over and he says, is there a problem? And the guy goes, get out of my face. And so Apollo Crews beats his ass. And all of a sudden, Apollo's back at the table with his journal. It It was a dream. But then the guy's still complaining. And so Apollo Cruz gets up and he walks over and he says, Is there a problem? And the guy goes, Get out of my face. And so Apollo Cruz beats his ass again. Well, they don't show that. Well, obviously that's what happened. Well. So, like, what is this? Is he Nostradamus? Is he a prophet? He has visions of future beatings? This is bizarre. You're mean. I'm not mean. That's exactly what happened. He's a superhero. He was having an a internal superhero. struggle. Yes, he was having an internal struggle with himself. Bro, hold and on he a saw second. that whole thing happen, and Do he you know saw anything Wade? about superheroes. Superheroes are there to defend the weak. Yes, he started the fight. The guy wait, didn't wait, put one whoa. finger on him. You, you know what? You are 
You are the person that everybody hates. You no, dance I'm that not. Line. You are. Why don't you put on a blonde wig, bro? You Karen Wench. You because cannot. you're the type of person that would do that to that server at a restaurant no. that would require Apollo Crews to be the savior of the common man, to be the yeah, savior. Yeah, what is savior? Of, yes, I the can't savior. wait. I can't wait till the cops show up and Apollo Crews is is cuffed, and they go, uh, "You beat the absolute living hell out of this guy. Why?" And Apollo Crews says. Well, you know, he told me to get out of his face. Well, did he touch you? No. He didn't lay one finger on you. Nah. He just talked to me. Thanks so for ruining I, so pro I beat wrestling. His ass. For, thanks for ruining pro wrestling for everybody, Brian. Uh, this is absolutely. And bizarre. you like this show, huh? Fallon Henley against Tiffany Stratton. That's, well, that this was, was good. Yeah, this was good until uh, you know Wendy Chu bounced out on a bouncy yeah. ball she and sucks. distracted uh, uh, Tiffany Stratton, and she ended up getting pinned. I mean. Fallon Henley and Tiffany Stratton are guaranteed main roster. Don't even tell me they're not because it's totally different with the women than the men. It's totally different. You all know that. They're both going to be stars on the main roster. It's going to be a little different, but there's Charlotte and Sasha for you. Like, they are generational opponents. And I actually thought the same thing in the opener as well, too, because I think the Greed Brothers are going to be there for a long time. But watching Belayed and and, and Ofe... I mean, obviously, I don't know where they need their benchmarks to be because they've been there for a little while and, and they have itchy trigger fingers, but they seem like they have the ability to be in that system for a long time. They have a good look. They're still very young yet, so if they survive it, I could see them on the main roster for a long time, too. We had uh, a video package with Lash Legend about all of her, her sporting success. With her shoot name. Which was like, a, yeah, it was like a good package and everything like that, but like everything that, they, that had her name on it, it didn't say Lash legend and then like none of it had anything to do with combat sports it's It's like man i can't wait to see this you know woman who is really good at basketball and running the the woman who is professional wrestling matches who is really good at finishing second in track and field and i'm not throwing that under the bus but it's like it is kind of funny where it's like she's not like she was an sec champion or anything granted she's got some basketball cachet to fall back on but it's like i was second in 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 this track and field competition i'm coming here to take over a new sport it's like to what finish second wesley beat zion quinn yes he pinned him i don't know if this bodes well for old zion quinn well we had the dyad versus dante chin and javier javier bernal and uh the dyad they wrestled in their monk outfits or their druids or whatever. I said, do you need to explain who the dyad is? And the fans are chanting, show your face or something like that. It's Joe Gacy's two hooded guys. It's probably the grizzled young vets, but... The burgundy robes. They're wrestling in, in robes now, so... Tony D'Angelo did a promotion video. Oh, he had a Nikita Lions one as well. The Lions going to roar again soon, everybody. Tony D'Angelo with stacks and two dimes. So if you're wondering what's up with uh, two dimes here... They uh, they taped like three weeks of shows or something like that. So I guess they just decided, you know, he'll be on the show until we tape again, and then he's gone. So uh, he rewards them all with watches, and Santos Escobar, his crew, is there, and they're all upset. And then Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams come out, and uh, essentially this leads to a tag match uh, for the main event, Stacks and Two Dimes against Hayes and Williams. Prawn Breaker just... Pummeled Duke Hudson in a beautiful, fantastic Goldberg style violent destructive match. <laughs> I loved it. Bro, you gotta do this now for a while to to get Braun Breaker back to where he was before you practically ruin this guy with Joe Gacy. This guy was so awesome in this match. And he killed this poor Duke Hudson fast. And it was awesome. And then Cameron Grimes comes out and uh challenges Braun Breaker. And uh, I know people were upset about this because Grimes was mentioning his father. I didn't have a problem with it. He was just pointing out, like, you know, everybody knows about you because of your father. Everybody knows your dad. He's a Hall of Famer. But nobody knows my dad. And his dad actually was a pro wrestling promoter. And so uh, he's unhappy about that. He wants a championship match. So it's taking place at the Great American Bash. We had uh, the debut of Giovanni Vinci. It is the uh, former Fabian Eichner. He's a great worker. I don't know if this has added one smidgen of uh, charisma to him, but he is a... And I, don't, I can't figure out... I think he's supposed to be a heel, but uh, you know who's a great, fiery babyface is Giovanni Vinci. So hopefully they figured that out. 
But he beat Guru Raj. He looked great, and uh, that was good. We had uh, this... Uh, guys, remember years ago when uh, uh, Carlito was uh, lazy? In real life, he was lazy. And so I guess they decided one day they're going to have Ric Flair cut a promo on this bloke in a backstage segment. And Ric Flair freaking buried this dude. He just buried him six feet under about being lazy and... Bro, first off, that promo was fantastic. This was the exact same promo. Edris Anofe and Malik Blade, you know, uh, Malik's kind of depressed and they lost. And Edris is like, dude, we'll get another shot. Wins and losses, they come and go. Let's go to the club. And uh, Cameron Grimes watch, walks up and he's like, what's up? Where are you guys going? Oh, we're going to the club. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, you know, what about tonight? Ah, you know, we'll get another shot. And Grimes goes, will you? And he buried these two what are you doing leaving this show early look at you you you're, you're built like a statue you could be one of the biggest stars in this entire company but here you are leaving the show early you lost tonight and you ain't even worried about it and you're going to the club and uh it was actually really good because edris and nofe was like he was so awesome reacting to cameron grimes burying him because he's just shut up and he's all looking around. He's all. This was a great segment. So uh, I don't know where it's leading. I don't know if Grimes is turning heel because he was kind of a you know a jerk about it. But he was it was telling the truth. So uh, this was a great segment. Hey, wherever they're going, the evolution of uh, of Grimes is needed right about now. So I'll yes. take it wherever they go. And then finally, we had uh, Carmel Hayes, Trick Williams against Stacks and Two Dimes, and uh, it was all right. Uh, God bless uh, Trick Williams, but he's he's very green. And uh, anyway, uh, Hayes with the pin, and then uh, D'Angelo uh, came out and yelled at Legato del Fantasma. Then the main event was Roxanne Perez, Corey Jade, Indy Hartwell versus Toxic Attraction in a six-person match. Also, okay, it absolutely depended on who was in there. If the right people were in there, it was fine. If the wrong people were in there, it was not good. And then at the end, I don't know what happened, but uh, Cora Jade comes off the top with the uh, senton, and she lands on Gigi Dolan, and dude, Gigi starts screaming. And uh, the ref goes over to her, and uh, uh, I think it was uh, Roxanne gets tagged in, and they had a very obvious edit. And uh, Roxanne goes over there, and she does the old uh, cover. I forget who used to do this cover, but the cover where you actually don't put your body on the other person at all. There's, like, air between you and the person, and you get the pin. So I think that Gigi, like, hurt her ribs taking the senton. But I don't think it's, I don't think it's too bad, because I think she worked on the uh, house shows this weekend. But, man, she was screaming when she got hit with that senton. So anyway, if I get an update, I'll let you guys know. But that was the NXT show. We can talk more about it after the break. We'll take your feedback and more. Wrestling Observer Live. Back at the show, Brian Elber is here. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Phone lines are open. Oh, my. Oh. 844-913-2727. 844-913-2727. You can text 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. Mark is here. I don't know why, but NXT 2.0 is kind of growing on me. Show isn't excellent or anything, but it is a guilty pleasure of mine. And there is some solid stuff on the show. I agree with every word uh, of that right there. Tiffany Stratton fan. Yeah. Fan of a lot of them. This person here says, Fabian Eichner repackaged as Giovanni Vinci is quite awesome. Feels like the model Rick Martel from 1992 Superstars. And I loved his last ride powerbomb, which would have impressed Kota Ibushi. He's a good worker. Yeah, very. I like this bloke. Too bad he's stuck here. Well, it's kind of like Bartel, who's very good in his role aside Gunter now. He is good at doing that, but you remember him in the ring, and you remember those two together as a team. And, you know, who knows what the future is going to bring, but I would love to see them back together, especially when they could use tag teams. Person wants to know if NXT is better or worse than Raw or SmackDown. Uh, that's a good question. 
depends on like what do you mean? Yeah. Like if you, if you want to see the best wrestling, the best actual wrestling, well, the best match of the week in on WWE has been uh, Seth Rollins and AJ Styles, which was on Raw, and uh, Sheamus and Drew McIntyre on SmackDown, which both were excellent yeah. matches. Nothing, you ain't going to see nothing like that on NXT 2.0. And there's pros and cons to everything here. I mean, three-hour show as opposed to two and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, if you like WWE programming... I mean, NXT is right up your alley. It's not like it's alternate programming the same, the same way people used to call it Hunter's Fantasy Ring of Honor camp. You know, it's like, no, this is exactly the same thread going through the major shows. That's what goes through NXT. I think also with NXT is the stuff in NXT that's bad. It is more usually funny bad. Campy, like, yeah. That Apollo Crews thing is preposterous. <laughs> I don't it's know if that's bad yet. <laughs> but it was funny. Whereas like some of this stuff that I see on, on Raw is just like that's just actively bad. It's, it's too much Wendy Chu funny stuff. Bad. Yeah, it's too much Chew stuff on Raw. Well, the Wendy Chu obvious... stuff is stupid. Well, exactly, and that's the obvious punch in the face that sometimes, like, you need out of comedy and stupid stuff, but the problem is they just do it so often and so much of it's not good. You are going to see, you know, uh, it, it, how can I say it? I mean, when, when, uh, when stuff is bad, like... Uh, on Raw, when there's, like, bad matches, they're just, like, bad and boring. But on NXT 2.0, they're funny bad. Because it's like, you watch someone do something, and it's like, well, what are they doing? Or cringy bad, because the Creeds are going to kill somebody, or you see a move that's so messed up, you're, you're just dying, making sure nobody got hurt. Yes. By the way, uh, if you guys like seeing my handsome face on video here, uh, get ready to see it here for a while, because apparently... Uh, our producer's power went out, so it's just, <laughs> can't switch the cameras or anything. Oh no! So that's gonna be that's gonna be an awkward uh, oh, next no. couple of minutes right here. Mm -mm -mm. What what uh, what other uh, differences <laughs> do we have between NXT and the main roster? Oh, you got a pretty smile. I don't know. Get out of here. <laughs> this person says uh, Tanahashi can win the title. This is the AEW title. Lose a count out to Yano in the G1 and a oh pinfall God. loss to Lance Archer. Title match on Dynamite that Tanahashi retains against Archer. And he could even beat Yano in a defense in Japan. What? I still think Tanahashi should beat Moxley's his point. I wouldn't you hold your breath, buddy. <laughs> well, even if you wanted to do that, you don't have to. I don't know. You don't have to defend it in the G1, for heaven's sakes. This person, Yano. Here, this person here is, is defending. Uh, baldness he says going bald is underrated no haircuts no hair combing yeah. and permission to grow a massive beard well here's the thing yes no haircuts no hair combing you you have permission to grow a beard whenever you want dude you can grow a massive beard with hair but the issue is that you're then you're also bald yeah that's the other that's the other problem with being bald yeah so it's cool you're in bald. The summertime yeah yeah so here's the thing I'm you not, are so vain. No, hold on a second. Hold on. No, actually, there, there's a big... You're oh, wrong. Oh, here we go. I, I, I have no problem with a bald head. And in fact, I have shaved my head bald. And in fact, every summer, I would love to shave my hair bald. However, my lovely wife, that's the one, that's the one thing she has put her foot down on in terms Wait. of stupid things that I've done with my, my head. She does not like me bald. So, Wait a second. Yes. Wait a second. That's not the only thing. She also doesn't like when you grow a beard. She probably no, but there's doesn't a difference. like if you do there's like, a difference. mutton chops. She will, she will, uh, I don't know the word, taller. She will still have sex with you with a beard, well, but like, she will absolutely she avoid you with a bald head. She doesn't prefer a beard, but she's not like, bro, can you cut the beard off? Now, Hanalei does not like the beard, so I'm pretty much clean shaven for a while here. <laughs> But the bald head, it was like every day I had to hear something about the bald head. So uh, I would be fine with the bald head. I would be fine uh, shaving my head. She but, likes to uh, rub her fingers through your hair. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't wash it very often. Oh, Nash's haircut was for a movie role and likely needed it that exact length at that exact moment. Hey, I'm back. Bro, you guys know anything about movies? He, he could have got a haircut two months before he had to start filming. It's not like he's signed for the movie and they're like, we're filming tomorrow. 
you have a little bit of lead time. So he he was too vain to shave his head bald. Who wins the title? What, yes. What's worse, that or having a match like Paul Elring and Teddy Long had back in the day where two bald guys were having a hair versus hair match? Well, that's ridiculous, Mike. That doesn't make any sense. That's like you and me having a mask match. That would be dumb. Unless the loser had to put on a mask. Who wins a title in WWE first once they get called up? Braun, Breaker, or Daddy's Girl? I'll go with Stratton. I go with Braun Breaker. I can see him showing up and like on the first day, like beating a Volter and winning the so title or something like well, that. Well, it's what they sh- probably should do, but I don't have that much faith in them. This person here says Jeff Hardy's DUI could be a blessing in disguise. Him doing a ladder match in this condition right now scared me, to be honest. Maybe he got paralyzed in an alternate universe. Oh, don't think I didn't Jesus. think. Thank God he's out of this ladder match. Yeah. Because well. I did think that. But I don't like the idea that you have to get a DUI and put lives in danger to be taken out of a ladder match. He should have just not been in the ladder match yes. in the first place. Nearly blowing four times the legal limit, there's other ways out. Like not booking it in the first place. This person here says, do you think there will be any women's matches on the Forbidden Door pay-per-view? And if not, does that matter? Would AW try to make it up? Well, here's the deal. So, uh, New Japan doesn't do women's wrestling. And uh, apparently Dave said there were going to be no stardom matches on Forbidden Door. No, they're running a lot of shows. I find it hard to believe. What well, doesn't matter if they're running shows? You can send one woman Yes, over. well, I, I know what you mean. We've but talked about it's this just, at length. It's just not happening. But I, I find it impossible to believe that we are going to do AW Forbidden Door and there's not going to be a women's match on the show. So my guess is you're going to have a Thunder Rosa title defense against someone in AEW at Forbidden Door. That would be Or my you guess. have a challenge sent in. You save some time where you have Britt Baker out there, who or whoever it is, and she's challenged by Kyrie. She's challenged by Tam Nakano. She's challenged by Julia, whoever it is. You can do something on that show relating to the women without actually having to have a women's match, even a live segment. You could do something where you can drive home the fact that stardom is coming and all that sort of stuff because they are going to be touring more and all that. So it, there's easy ways to do it. Brian, your opinion is toxic attraction ready for the main roster. <laughs> well, Mandy was on the main roster and they sent her back down to NXT. As far as the act, it's like if they want them, they want them. I mean, are they are they as good in the ring as Asuka and, uh, you know, Bianca and whoever else? No. Are they as good in the ring as Carmella and, uh, you know, Zelina? Yes, they're they're better or at the same level as them. So it's if they want him up or not. Let me That's also it. say this, too, when it comes to stardom. I mean, they actually have to work out a, a actual deal with stardom because there is obviously the link that Kenny Omega has to Tokyo Joshi Pro. We've seen... Plenty of women, not the least of which has been Maki, Maki Ito, who's come over here. So that's something that needs to be established as well, too, because it's not like Stardom and TJP work together on a on a regular close basis or anything like that. So there could be some a little bit of politics there, too. Let's see. What do we got right here? <laughs> my, fr- my friend dated a guy who shaved his head. But then she dumped him when she found out he was also actually bald. Huh? Wow. Well, so it didn't grow back. Listen, and if then... she's going to dump you because you're bald, you're all right, brother. Just whatever you do. It's the summertime. If you do go new, newly bald out there, remember, you got to put some sunscreen on that. You don't want to get the, the red head with the peel on it and all that stuff, especially if you got one of those Sharpay puppy heads, like you shave your head, you wonder how it's going to look, and it's like a bunch of, looks like you got like a roll of hot dogs back there or something like that, like, like a Sharpay puppy's rear end. If you got that, definitely cover that up because you don't need to burn that and look even freakier. And uh, let's see. That's it for the text messages. If anybody want to call, now's your chance. <laughs> I'll take one call today. Nothing to talk about. Nobody cares about anything. 
If Jericho loses the hair match, needs to be shaved completely bald, then come out in a ridiculous wig every week, claiming his hair grew back because he's a wizard. Oh, my God. They can just start pulling out the extensions. You know, they don't even need to actually shave anything. But, uh, you know, that would be right up Jericho's alley. He is a he is a sports entertainer now, isn't he? If he were to come back out with several different types of things to cover up his hair. What, what, what have we had in the past? We have bandanas. We've had wrestling headgear, all that sort of stuff. So here's the thing. I don't think Jericho, he's not, he's er, like 50, maybe, maybe 51. He's, he's not, I mean, I'm 47, so he ain't old at all. But the no. point is, I think he's ready to be, you know, totally white haired, but uh, he <laughs> did, he did a thing. I can't remember when, was it Halloween or something? There's something he did, and he came out in like a, a, a long white wig, and I I looked at it. And I was like, "Bro, this is your new look, dude, the the white wizard." Yes. Oh well, man. I, well, you may want to uh, you may want to remix that a little bit, but uh, you know, Jericho, like Kevin Nash, Kevin Nash had it right. At some point, you can stop chasing your past. At some point, you can put the bottle of hair dye down, and you can actually be who you are and have the the big silver mane. Because, again, I would rather have a full head of silver hair than have, like, you know, a scraggly head of, of, of hair, but all of my color. I mean, come on. You are so vain. And oh, you listen accused to you. me of that earlier. Listen to you. Everybody in the chat, by the way, thinks Jericho's losing tonight. We 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 all have hope. Why does everyone hope he loses? Because it would be a lot funnier seeing him get his head shaved than Ortiz, wouldn't it? Well, I mean, it would be funny if... Uh, I'm not sure that he really wants to be funny. I'm not sure if he wants to come back in a wig. Well, good. So, I mean, so it would make... be funny, but I'm not sure that he wants to be doing, like, goofy comedy. Well, if he doesn't want it to be funny and he wants it to be, you know, make it really real, get one of those old Bic razors, you know, the disposable ones, and just slowly start peeling it back. Then that won't be funny at all. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, blokes, I've done a poll on my Twitter. There's a poll up right now. And uh, 330 votes. We're in a quick five-minute poll. At this moment, who is losing? Chris Jericho has 59.7% of the vote. Ortiz, but 40.3% of the vote. So uh, it looks like uh, basically 60 to 40 in favor of Jericho losing tonight, according to my uh, all the bots on my Twitter. It's a highly scientific poll. It's a very scientific poll. Now, did you put a limit on this? You did put a limit on this with everybody Five minutes. that's retweeting it right now. <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted the answer before the show goes off the air. They didn't give me a one-minute option. So I did five minutes. We'll see what people think. Aren't you tired of finishing things in one minute, though? You know what? I just want to drive you from this show for this week. Can I do that? I'm really done with you. I'm tired of you coming after me. I'm tired of you saying I sandbagged a show and didn't show up intentionally on Monday. I'm tired of you saying I'm having connection issues. All this sort of stuff. I can pretty much guarantee you that I can do this show a lot better off without you. I can do it just fine on my own. And in fact, and in fact, I, because I am a wizard myself, I am actually going to heal, heal... Dominic Jimenez, Dominic, producer Dom, put your hands on your listening device right now. You are now healed. You will be back with me tomorrow without Brian Alvarez. You're going to need him. <sighs> Fine, you could take the show, brother. At least I got to do the NXT 2.0 report before I left. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're out of time. Have fun with Mike the rest of the week. I quit. Hope you feel better, Dom. We'll talk to you blokes tonight. Wrestling Observer Live.